season two, episode number two. Let's get it, boy! Hope y'all feeling real good. You know we gotta come in with some dope music on the Kyra Montero show. Wow. I started with this vision, people thought I was a scrub. Yeah. Now they show me love, you would think I was the plug. Yes, sir. Now I got the keys and I'ma oh, show you what it is. King on his grind, you know I had on my feet. You know I'm getting to the Blessings, 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 Ladies, that's the circle. Zero lanes. What's happening, man? What's happening? My name is Kyra Montero. I am the guy that started this podcast. Yeah, I heard the lyrics. They said, Chat the circle. Zero lanes. Speaking of the circle, I got one of my close brothers, man, that I, I grew up with, man. Definitely. Uh, blood couldn't make us no closer, man. I got my guy Philip Boy, aka Big Freezer, in the house and clap. The biggest, the biggest, Big Freezer. Y'all know what time it is, man. What's going on, man? It's a pleasure to be here, bro. Man, season two, dog. It's been, man. It, it feel good, man, to to be back doing this, man. It's been over a year now since season one. Yep. And uh, I want to do a better job at being consistent with this thing because I feel like season one added a lot of value. I feel like it was some dope people from the city. Yep. And even though a lot of people don't know what city we come from, uh, Marion, Indiana is where we at, I feel like the value that's being added uh, from people who've been featured from the city mm -hmm. transcends the geographic locations. Oh, for sure. So for the people that don't know what I'm talking about, what I'm saying is, is that you ain't got to be from man to understand what we're saying, boy. <laughs> man, hope y'all doing well, man. We're going to call this episode, this is season two, episode number two. We're going to call this No Manual, All On Sight. I got a problem with how we just started. What's you that? Season two, episode two, and I'm just now getting on here. It's cool. It's the topic for another discussion. It's all good. Cry me a river. Okay, it's all good. Look, man, look. Season, season six, two. Season six, episode 10 is what I'm getting you on. <laughs> <laughs> season two, episode two, we calling this thing No Manual, All On Sight. I'm going to repeat again. No Manual, All On Sight, man. And we want to touch on the challenges of fatherhood, man. You know, I know for myself, coming up as a youngin, my mom had me uh, as a teenage mom somewhere, you know, like 17, 18, something like that, you know, around that coming out of high school age. My biological father, who was from uh, Ypsilanti, Michigan, right outside of Detroit, Michigan, uh... Garvin Kraut, a.k.a. Chico Kraut, um, you know, they kind of did their thing. And, you know, I was born in May 10th, 1990, so um, I didn't come up with my biological pops, uh, which is no no shade at him. I'm just speaking facts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, thank God that I still had the opportunity to experience fatherhood. Um, honestly... Um, you know, I don't think it could have been better because when I was almost two, my mom married the one and only, the late, late great, great Elder Grady Speed, aka G Natural. Hand clap for the legend. Late great. That's the man. And so man. he was an amazing father, man. And you know, there was things that him and my mom would just went through, you know, in parenthood. Looking back, I'm like, Yo, I get it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, man, for you know, even though my biological father was not in my life, it, it I can't like. It's a blessing in disguise. Well, well, here's the thing: I don't, I don't have no. I think there's some things that me and him probably need to talk about more, but I don't have no hate for him, and I'm honestly speaking that. At least I don't know I do. 
unless it's deep, dark, rooted that I don't know. You'll know. Yeah, I don't. I don't have no hate for him because yeah, you'll know. You know, back in 1990, went on Facebook in the 90s, went on Instagram. Like you couldn't get a hold of people. Like I just understand that people are people. Right. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. and then now that I'm a father, <clears throat> and now that you know, going, I'm 33 now, so. You know, I've made mistakes in my own life. Mm. I've bumped my head. I ain't been the best husband. I haven't been the best father. I, you know, so it's just like, how can I sit up and have such disdain for you when I got my own dust on my porch that I need to sweep off? Right. I can't be worried about all the dirt on your, your porch, man. So, you know, mm -hmm. for those that don't know, uh, me, and, me and my boy Phil, we are both fathers. Uh, I got one at the moment, you know, uh, Hope to Ooh, add the to moment. the family in a, Ooh, hope, the moment. Hope to add to the family Ooh, at some point, man. I like that. Hope, hope to add to the family at some point, you know. So me and my wife back, uh, me and my beautiful wife Jada Montero back in October of 2016. Uh, you know, my wife birth, uh, my daughter Gis Giselle, and um, you know, these last almost seven years have been. Take me through that, like, not um. Not finding out she was pregnant, but like when it's like a month, a week, two weeks, like away from all right, the date is here, and there's like no way around it. So, you know, which, um, your first one, so like, so I, so I'll be honest, man. I, I, there's a few things. Um, so going back is like, and I'll share also, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, <clears throat> going back, like, I made a lot of first-time mistakes as a father. Mm -hmm. um, through the pregnancy process, when she was first born, uh, obviously I was in her life, right? Me and my mm -hmm. wife, we married, so, you know, I ain't never been a deadbeat, not, never, not one second. Um, but, you know, I think that looking back, my temperament, my, you know, I was even more impatient. I was, I, I just wasn't understanding, um, you know when she she when she was first conceived, I was twenty five. When she was born, I had turned twenty six. Um, so I am grateful that we got to be a little. I'm grateful that we wasn't like eighteen, nineteen, right. twenty, because I was, was absolutely not, far from not, ready. Right. Uh, even more than I was at twenty five, twenty six. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so you know, getting up to that point, man, I I, I had a lot of things, man, in in my life that I needed to deal with. So it's interesting that I got all of these personal battles that I need to deal with internally and spiritually and mentally as a man. But here I am about to have a beautiful daughter, a human being that, that I'm responsible for, mm -hmm. for raising and pouring into. And so, man, I would say that I would, you know, I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. Um, I feel like, I, I could have stepped my hustle up financially more. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like mentally, spiritually, I just feel like I could have been ready. But going back to the title, like no manual, all on sight. That's what it is. You know, but but I am thankful that I can reference back to my pops. Yeah. Try to implement things that I learned from him. Not only him, like, but just dope men. Um, just period. Like, uh, like my grandfather, uh, Elder Lloyd Majors, uh, you know, we grew up at Greater Second Baptist Church here, man, you know, there's been dope men that we've been exposed to. And so I know for my for myself, like, I think at the top of fatherhood, I thought I was ready, but I wasn't as ready as I thought I was. And I and honestly, man, every day is just man. It's just a pro it's just a journey, so, man. Every day is a journey. Um, mine, I think mine's a, a little bit different because, like, in the midst of me celebrating the, like, birth of, at the time, I thought my first child, like, a curveball out of nowhere just come, and I find out I might possibly have another child that's basically the same age as the child I'm getting ready to have. So mm. it was just one of them things like like I held on to it for a long time. Like once I seen them, 
and talked to his mom and kind of did like a little, you know, the little finger, one, two, three, five <laughs> minus carry the one, subtract. You know, once I did that, I'm like, oh, like this might, like this for real. It might be mine. And, you know, it's just, you know, just one of them things that, you always say like, oh, I hope I'm not that person, and I'm just speaking about me personally because I've like I've hear it all the time, heard it all the time, seen it all the time. Like, baby, boom, you out of there, dad not around, and you just come around as you feel. And I like promised myself I did not want to do that, but then you know situations happen, and I'm like, man, like two at the same time. So, um. My my youngest son, he was born in September of 2018, and my oldest son was born in January of 2018. Had no idea, and right before um, my youngest was born, I find out that this one is my like my, this other child that I think is mine is mine at this point. I just kind of held on to it for a minute because I didn't want to, you know, storm on anybody else's parade because it was also my youngest son's mother's first child. So I just kind of held on to it because I'm just like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Like, let's be happy. This is our situation and we'll just go from here and then I'll bring it to you and break it down to you because I know it sound wild, but there was like no, like I was over here and then I stepped over here and went like there was none of that. So so let me ask you this. It was, uh, it was put me in a weird space. So let me ask you this, and I can answer. I can I can piggyback and reflect uh back after you after you answer this. What so I feel like I feel like if any man who is a father, like a father that's actually present in their kid's life mm -hmm. consistently, not just a sperm donor, mm -hmm. not just a, a a Father's Day Facebook selfie dad, mm -hmm. but a real dad that's present. Mm -hmm. I feel like fatherhood exposes your flaws even more. Oh man. So so let me ask you this. Hmm. If you could be honest, and it don't have to be long, what do you feel like some of the like some of the biggest things fatherhood has exposed for, uh, of you as far as some some flaws and weaknesses as a man, as a father? What do you what do you feel like since being a dad, what has it challenged you to like grow on? You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think maybe just being more vulnerable because, like, yeah, you know, like I laugh, I smile. People see me, you know, just like up here all the time. And then, like, when I got something going on, I just kind of just like shut the door and just try to just deal with that myself. And I realize, like, I got to stop doing that. So, I think having my son, having my youngest son, and with him having um, autism and my oldest son also having autism, I think it just kind of um, made me more vulnerable, made me a little bit more softer and, you know, just in life period because I just used to just, like, you know, like I used to be, they, you know, they used to call me angry man. I never really, I smiled, but it's just like, like, you know, I had that since I was a kid. So I kind of, I carried that as an adult. And now I was just like, you know what? Like, you got kids and like, I want to be the best dad I can. And I can't do that if I'm not, like, if I don't open myself up to, you know, other things and pay attention to other things that people are doing, take notes from everybody, like, been, you know, I've been around people with kids forever, so just trying to pick, see what they're doing with theirs and see if I can incorporate it with mine in any type of way and also myself. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, dog. I, I think what you said, being vulnerable, I think when my – so my obviously, like, the man that raised me, my pops, he died uh, February um, 16th. No. Either February sixteenth or seventeenth, two thousand nine. Mm -hmm. um, but he died in February. Anyways, he died in February two thousand nine, and that I always had kind of had a temper. 
coming up, but that really flared up a temper in me, and it built up an emotional wall. Mm-hmm. And so I just, you know, since after my dad's death, I really didn't know how to, like. Let your feelings out. Jail. And, and I wasn't great at, like, in, like intelligently and intellectually, like, regulating my emotions. Like, I think a lot of times as men, we don't like to admit that, like, we are super immature at, like, regulating our emotions oh, yeah, and our communication sure. skills and how we deal with things. And so um, I think that being a father just – for me, it exposed everything because, you know, I already knew what my personal struggles were. And then here comes a beautiful baby girl, and it just – for me, it just, like, it exposed things even more. And I think that's where, like, that's the – and I hear that people, you know, I got two boys. I don't have a daughter. Everybody keep telling me, like, bro, when you have a daughter, like, it's you're, it's different. It's totally different. I'm just like, and I tell some of my homies that don't have boys, I'm like, nah, like, when you got a son that, like, like, like what you wanted as a child with your pops and you trying to get that with your kids, like, and it's working, that's the best feeling in the world. For for me, you know, I understand that both genders, you know, uh, rather you got a son or a daughter come with different sets of challenges because, mm-hmm. you know, uh, males and females are just different. That's just how God made us. We mm-hmm. are just, our genders and our, our DNA make up how we think, how we move is just different. But at the same time, regardless of the gender, you have somebody that you are responsible for. Mm-hmm. Or, or with you, you got multiple, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just like, both is just like going challenge you in a certain kind of way. So I know like for myself, it showed me how impatient I was. It showed me how um <laughs> how much my temper really was a problem. It showed me how much my attitude and my lack of communication skills with my wife was, how much I need to step my hustle up more. Like it just re- my time management flaws. Like it really just like my priorities like yeah. It really challenged and checked everything because here I am at 26. I'm used to just moving and grooving with just me and wifey, and then bang. It's just, it's just different. And so I think that this leads to another thing, man, that I think is important. And I think this goes for, this goes for mothers and fathers. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we're talking as fathers, but this can go, this can go both. As a father... You have to make sure, no, not you. As fathers, we, uh, we need to make sure as much as possible that we keep our mental health, our spiritual health, our physical health. Like, we need to make sure that we invest into us to be the best version of us so that we can be the best version for our kids. Mm -hmm. For sure. Because if you're not the if you're not the greatest version of yourself that you can be, no good to nobody. Yeah. Now I'm not talking like I'm the greatest version of myself right mm-hmm. now. I'm not talking like I got it all together. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking to myself first. Yeah. Uh, and then if other people can relate, then that's what's up. But we definitely got to make sure that we are like the best versions of ourselves, um, so that we can be more effective fathers. And that, that's something. And like. Like when you said not to, you know, double back, but like you said, like the personal struggles that you deal with, like I think I dealt with two major ones, like as a young adult. I was like I was in high school when my grandfather that I named after Philip Boy died. I was he died on Mother's Day, on your birthday. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a fact. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine, May tenth. So that and then my best friend get killed. Maurice, you know what I mean? Excuse me. And, like, I suppressed so much when Maurice got killed. Because I'm like, you see this on, like, TV, movies. Like, shoot, even in that, like, you see it. But then, like, that hits you and, like, your community. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, that floored me. So, like, I, like, I, I kind of... Around, like I say, like, when Maurice died, I think, like, that, like, 
totally changed me. Cause like, there's no way like somebody I grew up with, I gotta go see in a casket. And then like I said, then my grandfather, me being named after him, that alone is a bond that I tell people like I can't explain it. That's why like sometimes like you know like we caught each other coming out the graveyard uh, last week or week week before or whatever it was. I kind of like I try to go to my grandfather's a lot, but then again I got I can't go that much because I'm named after him and seeing my name on the headstone like already kind of rattle my mind a little bit on top of the stuff I just think about like on a daily so. Being strong for my kids is number one, but direct number two is my family because I just no other men left on my mom's side. But but I would say this, I would throw this in. I think being strong is exposing your weaknesses for sure and working on them. It's it's yeah. easy to bask in. Yeah, it is what you're strong in. Yeah, it's it's hard to like. It's hard to be real about your weaknesses and like and work through that you know at the end of the day honestly man you know i haven't really touched on this much on this podcast i touched on this a real on you know in our circle a lot mm-hmm. um you know rather you know and this is not to offend any other race at all but you know what we deal with here in this country and the United States of America, and we for short, we're just gonna say here in the USA or US, the history in this country. Mm-hmm. Now, let me before I say what I say, we are not making excuses or, or playing victims. No, I don't know. And we are not blaming another race for what we can't do right now. But at the end of the day, the fact is is that slavery happened. Right. The fact is is that hundreds of years after slavery, oppression still exists. Mm-hmm. Systematic racism and oppression still exists. Yep. Um, you know, and lack of equality in this country yeah. still exists. Yeah. Prejudice yep. still exists. Daily basis. And so Rather, people realize or not, like what we de- what we go through as black men on a day to day, just the anxiety at times that comes from how we come up, how we live, mm-hmm. how guarded we have to be in so many situations, is just it's enough in itself. Yeah, and honestly, yeah. man, I, I think I think a lot of us can use therapy. And and some or some life coaches and counseling, man. And I, 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 I think about that. I want to, but then it's like, and I know you're not gonna like. I've listened to a ton of people that say they do therapy and they help, but it's like the therapy that you need and that you're there for. I and that's not for me. I need somebody like you. Don't even got to understand what I mean or what I go through or what I think about or. You know, whatever, but don't look at me like I'm just such a terrible person because of the stuff that I'm telling you I feel or seen or whatever the case may be. I just want like a, just let me just come in here, let me sit on this couch and just let me talk. Like, you really don't even have to say nothing. Like, just let me, just let me get this off my chest. Because sometimes when you talk to somebody about some stuff that they've never experienced, you talking to a wall because how can they console you? You know what I mean? Like, it's, ah, man. Ah. You know, I feel like, um, you know, I feel like therapy can come from for people in different forms. But but I think as men, you know, like I learned this, you know, so for people, who, you know, my wife, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but for the listeners, um, my wife has uh, three degrees all in social work. She has a doctor in the social work. So obviously she's covered different areas like psychology and just different things. Mm-hmm. And one thing that she helped me realize is, is like trauma. I When I think of trauma, I think of it as like awesome. drastic, like, yeah. big stuff. Yeah. Like 
Maurice Sorry. Maurice getting murdered. Rex. I lost my pops at yeah. eighteen. Yeah. Uh, my aunt dying at a young man. age. Oh, man. Uh, family member being molested, or yeah. or you know seeing somebody getting beat domestically growing up. Like yeah. I always thought of trauma as like these like major kind of like lifetime movie crazy yeah, trauma type hit stuff. Trauma hits you like. Like rocks just getting thrown at you, bro. But but like, trauma can be anything on on anything on a small scale, and so when she really woke me up to that, like if I'm honest, it's like, dang, it's, it's had way more than you thought. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, I've had I've had honestly, you know what I'm saying, like. You're not even looking at it like it's trauma. It's just like, oh, that's something that happened. I get over it. Even legal matters that I that I that I've I went through. Look at the at the end of the day, man. This thing, we passed this thing. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I I'm 33 now, but when I was 22, I made a huge mistake and slept with a 15 year old girl, and uh, you know, got sentenced for sexual misconduct with a minor. Was a class B felony. Got convicted March of 2014. Sat on house arrest two years, three months. Mm -hmm. Probation for several years. Done being on the sex offense registry here in the state of Indiana in May of 2024. So that part is almost done, obviously. I'm done with the house arrest. I'm done mm -hmm. with probation. Had to do all the counseling, yeah. you know, therapy, lie detector tests. I'm not going to get into details. The detail is, is that at the end of the day, I'm a man of God. I'm married and I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Put myself in that position and had to be held accountable for that bad decision. Mm -hmm. But here I am, formerly the messenger, Christian hip hop artist touring all around the country. Mostly in a lot of youth groups. Yeah. And then here I am, got to turn myself in for a sex case. Now, you already know men in the church already looked at crazy. Crazy. And, and, Sexual kind of situations, mm -hmm. and so here I am, and bro, the th you know the things that people said and everything. I was like, looking back on that, just that whole experience. I'm like, Yo, I, 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 I might need to go back to therapy for that because yeah, of some trauma that came. You from was that. dealing with you was dealing with something while dealing with something else, but you're not even dealing with that other part yet because it's like I'm not even hearing anything right now because I gotta. I don't know what this judge is getting ready to do. Is she about to, I got to go sit down. Is she going to, like, I don't know. So it's like you deal with that. And, like, now, like you said, you're a year from being off that. But then it's like, then you just still think, like, dang, like, this, I was hearing some wild stuff. Look, man, I don't care what nobody say. Man. I don't care what none of these rappers and they in the or none of these cats on social media are saying, man, sitting in front of a judge, facing ten years possibly, is like was like, bro, my I don't think my heart has ever beat so fast, like literally, like the outcome of my life right now is literally in whatever this man says, mm -hmm. like, like you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. like, so, um. I think at the end of the day, man, I believe spiritually good, bad, ugly, sunshine, rain, mountaintop, valleys, highs, lows, trials and tribulations, victories, whatever. I don't think that we go through anything in life by accident or unintentionally from God. I think rather... God is allowing things to come in our life, or most of the time, a lot of our problems is self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. We cause a lot of the problems in our own lives. Mm -hmm. But no matter what, rather it's, it's natural, rather it's in our control or out of our control, mm -hmm. I don't think that we go through anything in life by accident. No, no. I think everything has a purpose. Yeah. I think that the purpose can be wasted if we don't learn from it. Yeah. From it. Mm -hmm. That's why they say, you know, it ain't a loss, it's a lesson if you learn from it. And so, you know, for me, that situation, I wouldn't change that. You know, people look at me different. Uh, you know, it, 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 it hurt employment. It affected my career. 
but I had to keep pushing. And and even being a father, I ain't going to lie. Sometimes I'm so impatient with my daughter. You know, we got autistic children. Mm-hmm. And with my daughter being autistic, you know, she got quirky ways and different things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we butt heads sometimes. Mm-hmm. I got quirky ways and I get on my wife's nerves, you know what I mean? And so sometimes we butt heads, but it's like, it kind of is a reminder like, yo, God got to have a lot of patience dealing with us for the I BS that, that we do. Yeah. I ain't thought that. Uh, you know, uh, as parents, parents don't want to be real, but parents, you no, get annoyed by yeah. your kids. Mm-hmm. Your kids get on your nerves sometimes. Oh. And, and, then, and then I feel like sometimes God checked me like, how much you getting on my nerves? Man, I never think about it like that, but oh, that's that's oh, that's real. You know, I think at the that's end of the real. day, man, a, as we come to the end of this, it's so much stuff. We dang near might have to do a part two to this because cause it's, it's, it's so many other areas that we can dive into. I think that at the end of the day, matter of fact, you want to keep going? Matter, matter of fact, this is this is definitely part one. You know what I'm saying? We definitely gonna have to get feel back on. So this is this is definitely no man. You're all on site. Part one. I definitely mean, a part two I coming. Finally get on there, and I got two parts. I might it definitely might a part be, two. It, it might got be a part three if we tap in too much. It got it got to be a part two because it's definitely things that we got to cover. But I, I think that at the end of the day, man, I think some 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 takeaways, man. For forefathers out there is is let at the end of the day, first off, if you got responsibilities, take care of them. Right. They didn't ask to be here. No matter how the situation happened, planned, unplanned, wanted, not wanted, like the mom, don't like the mom, wife getting along, not getting along. No matter the relationships, them kids need you. That kid or them kids mm-hmm. need you. So one is, man, we need to take care of our responsibilities. We need to be the best version of ourselves. And if we can do that, man, if we be the best version of ourselves, um, it has a positive impact on our kids. Yep. It has a, imp- a positive impact on our families, on our communities, on our churches, on everything, in businesses, everything. So, men, I'm challenging myself first. It's time for us to be better versions of ourselves, you know what I'm saying, and be better leaders because uh, we need that, man. Phil, so glad you came on, my guy. I definitely, I definitely, I definitely appreciate you, man. You got, you working on your own podcast. You want to talk about that for a high second? Yeah, man. Um, You know, I got with my co-host, Mikey Ruthless. And he hate when I say this, but... The best battle rapper in the Midwest. You know? <laughs> hey, um, he better not hate it. Take some pride in that, man. Like, he don't like when I say that. He just say he said it. He said it. I ain't say it. I'm like, nah, we He'd be said all right. It. You know, but yeah, um, I know, you know, we've been we've been we've been clipping up. We got some more clips. We shot our first official episode last week. Um, I gotta get this guy to clean up clean up the audio a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, y'all get that very soon. Um, I'm still working on the YouTube page. Um, still, we're, we're getting getting some stuff going with a Facebook page. And, you know, we're just going to keep it going. Keep it going up. Y'all keep tuning in with us, man. Um, keep on coming with the developments and everything going on with it. Kill the Noise podcast. You know what I mean? Big Freezer. And I also... I'm about to, oh man, I'm about to drop an exclusive on here. Go ahead, do it. Man. <laughs> man, all right. So um, I'm also doing, I'm also going to start like a introspective podcast of just myself. Okay. Kind of more like a therapy session to myself, how we was just saying, because sometimes I can't talk to, somebody that might not understand what I'm going through or what what I feel or how I'm thinking and I think if I just say it and I get it out there then I think people will like start to open up and I'll invite somebody to come have a conversation just one-on-one me and that person that's it 
it just has some type of like introspective like back and forth conversation type thing so that was something that is literally like i thought about it like a couple weeks ago bam so i'm gonna get it going i can't tell y'all the name of that yet because y'all be stealing <laughs> well big freeze man we definitely big freeze we want to we, we appreciate it, you man Appreciate the love. Once man. again, man, this is this is my guy, Philip Boyd, yeah. aka Big Freeze, and uh, we grew up like brothers, man. And like I said, we're gonna have a part two. I'm not sure what episode it'll be on this season two, but we definitely gonna have a have a part two of this, man. Oh, for sure. Uh, make sure that y'all on this podcast, on my podcast, the Kyra Montero Show. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure that you check out KyraMontero.com. Also, wherever you can find podcasts at, make sure Apple Podcasts, yep. Google, yep. Spotify, yep. Amazon, all of that stuff. All that. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast, listen, download, rate, and tell some people about this. If y'all want to see high definition uh, videos of the, the video version of the podcast, head over to YouTube. Like I said, it is available on all platforms that allow podcasts to be listened to and downloaded. And I just appreciate y'all one more time, man. Round of applause for Big Freeze. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. And everybody else on the podcast, man. And I want it. And if you need some studio time, Frequency Camp is the best studio in Marion, Indiana. Y'all better stop playing. I got the best engineer, producer. He the best rapper at Marion. I said it. If y'all don't believe me, you want to come test him, come up here. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put a beat. I'm going to pay for a beat, and I'm going to make everybody <laughs> in Marion get on that beat. I'm not playing. I'm holding y'all feet to the fire. Y'all the best at Marion. Come holler at me. Come on. Friendly competition, man. It's for the summer, man. Let's do something, man. Let's go. Like the homie Roof said, he said that I didn't, man. He said that I didn't. I all did right, man. All the smoke. Hey, man. Y'all be safe, man. Y'all be blessed. To all the men out there, uh, remember, man, there's no manual. This is all on site. You know what I'm saying? Trust the process. Trust God. Get plugged into some other men that's solid. Uh, get some therapy if you need it. This thing is not easy. Life got its ups and downs, but it's worth fighting for, man. It's worth fighting for what you love. It's worth fighting for the people that you love. It's worth fighting for yourself, man. We out this thing, man. Y'all be safe. Yep.